Yo, oh, yo, yo, what the fuck is up? <laughs> fucking, we got Ari Gonzalez in the motherfucking building Hi. here. She's back. Excited to be back. Yes, yes. She's alive. She's a back. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's going on? How you been? Uh, I've been good. 2023 has been productive so far. Um, definitely excited for the new year. Um, yeah, just been moving along, uh, being as productive as possible. Growth is always the the number one motive so just striving towards that always okay okay and uh how's been life treating you after like you know graduating and all that stuff yeah, like um it's been really good i had my company's launch party in october um you know what's your company's called with, my company is called daring defy okay yeah I've seen so that. what that is is it's a tailored management and education company for independent artists okay uh, we're really just focused on that education part of things and um, just providing resources for ooh, for go. independent musicians as well as uh, young professionals. So just teaching people about the music industry, how it works and how they can navigate through it. Um, so I've been doing in-person classes. I also do online classes, one-on-one coaching. I've been doing, um, I stage manage for a showcase called Spotlight Another one is going to be coming up in January. We've got like women in music events happening in Orlando. So just continuing to have fun on the event side, you know, continue to meet people, bring people in, let them know about, you know, the value that we're bringing when it comes to like the education and resources. Okay. And um, as a typical manager for like certain artists, like what is the standard, like how many artists per, per manager? So that is going to depend on the manager's business structure. Um, So if it's a one person show like myself, I only have one full service client. If they have, you know, themselves and maybe a couple of assistants or interns or, you know, a small team, you can handle one person, I would say, you know, roster of like five or six people. Um, And, you know, the larger that your team is, the larger amount of people that you can bring on. But if you're working for like a firm or something like that, it's going to be higher numbers and the you know firms represent hundreds of of acts so it really just depends on the company that you're with is going to be you know have to do with the workload that the manager is going to have is it also depending on like the size of the artist like you know how Um, how big the artist is or does that it doesn't really yeah um most artists who are working for firms and artists who or, and managers who are working for fir- for firms and who have larger teams, they're not going to be working with independent musicians. And that's not because they don't see necessarily the value in it, but they are, you know, they're working on a commission basis and they have employees to, you know, make sure are being paid for. Yeah. So their commission needs to be, you know, a pretty large size and you're not going to get that on the local lo- level. I'm trying. Oops. <laughs> Round of applause. The <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, one. guys. I'm still working on the, the keyboard and shit. But yeah, um, so you heard about that Tory Lane shit, right? Oh, with Meg? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, okay. <laughs> whose side are you on? That's my I'm question. I'm on Megan's side. You're on Megan's side. What's your opinion on it? Why? Um, I low key think that Kelsey actually shot her. Okay. Um, but Megan got shot. I'm on the side of the fucking drunk girl who got shot by her friend and people she trusted. I don't really give a fuck about anything else. She was shot and people know what happened. The whole thing is fishy. None of us actually know what it's, took place that night. It's true. Um, but what we do know is that there are medical records that show that Megan was shot in the fucking foot. So I don't know what else people. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the trial happened. We saw the outcome of it, um, and that's that's pretty that's, much it, right? <laughs> there's nothing else to say about it. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard, you know, because it's like again, you're not you're not there. You don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of money involved too. Like these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. Tory Lanez is producing millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? In music, so I, is Meg. Meg exactly. And let's, and let's be real. Let's she got bars. Honest. Yeah, but Meg is making more money than Tory. Really? Tenfold. Damn, I thought it was the opposite because he was independent. Isn't he independent or no? Tori, I don't know the inner workings of, of how he's doing things. Yeah. But if we want to talk about star power and yeah. who's bigger. Do you think it's because of Jay-Z having her back? <laughs> no, I think it's because she's she um, 
similar to the city girls, she has her own culture. She she is a cultural phenomenon. Ah. Yeah. And no. you know who the fuck you, she, you're talking about? You know what I'm saying? And she like, got bars. She has, she has bars. bars. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's more than that. It's, you know. I feel like she's just, she's talented. She's extremely talented. And yeah. she's been talented. She's been gorgeous. She's yeah, she's been hot. Talented. Yeah. She's talented. She's been all these things for, and, you know, was in college for the past couple of years while she was doing, like, in the height of her career. Yeah. So, she's awesome. But, you know, the point that, it, that I'm really getting at is it's, like, the culture that she's created amongst the women and men who listen to her as well is so strong that it's more than than the music it's it's the emotional connection that people have to her music and to her brand and that is like it globally expansive tory lanes uh, i don't know i just thought that just somebody <laughs> that's independent you know he has his own you know people that that make his music he, he has his own producers right the people that make his videos he has his own team how important is it to you like having like like an extremely strong team like Drake? You Absolutely. know what I mean? Like it's um I mean the most important part is you know the cogs in the machine and making sure that everything is running smoothly. So I mean if not the most important thing, one of the most important things to have a strong team. Yeah. And you know whether you're on a label or you're independent it's it's all a people game you know what i mean you can be on a label and have a shitty team you can be on a label and have an amazing team you yeah. can be indie and have a shitty team and be indie and have an amazing team it's really about the people that you're surrounded with and you know meg we have seen her go through several like legal disputes with 300 entertainment and and there's a lot of mumbo jumbo going on with that um but the way that i kind of look at that especially once you start understanding the culture of, of labels and, and the industry, you realize, you know, Meg's creative director isn't the one making those decisions and isn't the reason that she's going to court battles. Her stylist, not the reason. Her videographers, not. I'm sure Meg has an amazing relationships with all, with all of those people yeah. um, and is making music. We saw with the, um, the hottie tape that she released, like that was just fun music that she had fun doing that she, I fully believe that Meg has creative freedom. Um, but, you know, when investors get involved, because that's what your what your label is, um, and they have certain powers and, and restrictions and things, that's where things get muddy. But I believe fullheartedly that, like I said, Meg has a great team. It's just some of those people at the top, she's not seeing eye to eye with. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure Tori has a great team as well. But like I said, I, it's not necessarily a matter of, like, if you have a label or not that's going to determine the quality of your team. Yeah. I saw a clip by 50 Cent and it was crazy. He was talking about how like the people in a business suit are more likely to rob you. You don't even know that you're getting robbed. Yes. You know, cause it's all con men are everywhere. And, th and that's really what it is. It's just people who are really great actors. Like they should have fucking careers in film and TV because they'd be fucking great at it. It's just people who know how to lie, know how to, um, it, it's it's all a mind game, you know what I mean? Because a lot of the times when you're hearing about people who are getting fucked over, whether it's on a large or uh, a small scale, it's people who, you know, are looking to fulfill something, whether that be monetary gain, personal power, feed into family, whatever the situation is. And, you know, it's just people who know how to exploit that and who know how to move around that and know how to isolate those people so that they're not taking the advice of the people around them who care about them, who might know a little bit better. Um, so that's why it's so important to to be educated on how the music industry works in the first place so that if someone is just talking bullshit to you, you know how to see through it. Um, but also just so that you you can learn as much, you know, technical stuff as you want, but if you don't know how to deal with people and how to maneuver manipulative tactics and bullshit like that, um, people skills is just a, a really big part of it. Word, word. That's real. And I'm going to trust you because I'm going to trust your opinion on that because it's like, listen, you went to school. I did. You, you went to school. She got her bachelor's degree. I did. And she did her thing. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people out here that are just doing it and they're just talking. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, just to just to say it, like, yeah. going to school isn't a necessity yeah. in entertainment. A lot of people, you know, especially the folks who came before us, like, who are huge, yeah. never went to school. And it was, they just happened to be in the right place at the right time. 
That's so true. But, um, you know, me going to school and I think a lot of people that go to school for music business or who go to school for these entertainment programs, we don't know where to start. Like myself, like my career took a whole 180. Like when I went to college, I was like, I'm going to be an artist. And then I started learning shit and I was like, oh, I'm going to totally, you know, and, and it's those kind of like, uh, what's that word? Conversions that, um, are really what schools do. Um, and of course the information is, is great and and it's super helpful, but you don't need it. Yeah. If you're willing to, um, do the work and you want to find the information out, like you'll, you'll do it. (laughs) Exactly. And you have a great voice by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Like way better than mine. And I make music, you know what I mean? I, I love music. I was in the studio last night and I was talking to Jay and we're just going through all the different videos. Like, you know, when YouTube pops up, it's always like a new new song that pops right. up or a new artist you never heard of. Mm-hmm. And you just go through it, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, like a lot of this stuff sounds the same. Yeah. You know, a lot of it does. Like 80% of it, you know? Um, you know. What do you think is the next sound? Mm. That's the real question. So. You got the UK drill that's already passing by. UK drill is doing great. And just drill in general is doing great. Yeah. You know, I think we have, you know, the whole like Jersey club music phenomenon, which is also do I honestly I think club music is gonna t- continue going up. We had Drake do his album. Yeah. We had Beyonce's Renaissance. Um, and once again, like that Jersey club. And yeah, I think that just club is like club music, house music, electronic stuff. Um, I think we're just going to continue continue to see like used in different ways, especially like just percussion wise. Yeah. That's the biggest element. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's hard to predict exactly where music is going to go, um, especially like myself, because I listen to so much stuff. What I want to see, I want to see R&B singers. I want to see a lot of like uh, I, I want to see people paying homage to the past and bringing modernization to it. Like I want to see people doing, you know, boom bap shit like very hip hop hippity hop yeah. to the hip don't you know like shit like that and bringing it to today i want to see old r&b music um like in 90s r&b music revamped i want to see soul music 70s soul music revamped yeah. i want to see funk music revamped like i um yeah cuz i think that we are fall a lot of us are and we see this in style music art culture in general so many people want to be original that they're being quirky in the same ways. Yeah. And I think that that might be what you're getting at with like a lot of the stuff sounds the same. Yeah. Um, Cause there's, there's so much music out there and there's so many young fucking people making like really cool stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. But their palette hasn't been. um, Like expand. Exactly. exactly. It hasn't been fully formed yet. So like they, they have this, one specific genre or one specific artist that they're really interested in and that's all that they listen to so when they're tracking demos or when they're doing stuff that's what's coming out because that's all the input is instead of you know exploring more avenues of music and taking things from different genres to plug into their own sound being inspired by visual art being inspired by poetry being inspired by these other things um People, I think that the, you know, just artist development, people, we are watching people go through artist development and the discovery of themselves yep. rather than seeing the thing five, 10 years of training down the line when yeah, they're ready. Exactly. Like St. John. I don't know who, if you mm-hmm. know who St. John is, if, yeah. if you listen from the beginning when he started, he was rapping, he was rapping like that, you know, like that New York, New York sound. And then now look at him. Like, it's incredible. The journey yeah. that, that artists go through from finding their sound. Right. And, um, do you think my next question is sorry to cut you off? But my next question is, um, I saw a, a clip of Prince talking about. I, I'm pretty sure you saw it. You know, he's talking about samples and stuff like that, and how it's going to be repeating itself. Do you feel? Do you agree with that? Or um, yeah, I, I mean, we've already seen it happen. There's yeah. uh, many examples of of music being sampled, and then the sample being sampled, and so on and so exactly. forth. Exactly. Um, the question is, is it good or bad? Exactly. And personally. I'm I, I'm what I call intellectual property revolutionary, um, which is someone that, you know, I personally in the perfect world, there is a standardized licensing fee that is low cost so that everyone is able to be creative. Because to me, it's either nobody is able to use copyright yeah. 
or everyone is able to use it. I don't like that some people are able to be creative with samples and some people aren't depending on how deep their pockets are. I didn't think about that. That's the way that I look at it um, because that's really just how the game is, you know, and it has nothing to do with whether, you know, the art is better or what, what not, because most of the music we listen to is sampled, sounds nothing like the sample and is great because it's an instrument. It's a tool. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's the way that, that I look at Do it. Do you feel like artists are getting killed for like their rights to their music sometimes? Do you feel like that's like a thing? Like murdered? Yeah, like do you feel like, you know, Nipsey um, Hussle and all yeah, these all these I do, weird... I do. I think it would be naive to say that there isn't foul play in certain situations. I just don't like to speculate on what. Because at the end of the day, the important thing is, is that a life was lost and that there's families hurting and that exactly. there's people in pain. So instead of like, you know, maybe there's this conspiracy and yeah. this is who did it. If, and the, if the family wants that and yeah. if the family is making those statements and it's like, we need, okay, I'll be behind that. 100%. Exactly. But yeah. if it's just fans and folks on the internet, like, oh, you know, and just egging shit on. Yeah. I don't really like to. Because you do see, to. yeah, you do see the difference in like you know, family members talking about it, yeah, you know, most and of the time they just like, please give us privacy and leave yeah. us the fuck alone. Yeah, like, exactly. And so, yeah, it's like, it's like Kobe Bryant when he passed away and shit. Yeah. That was so bad. It's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of amazing people in the world. Exactly. Unfortunately, shit fucking happens. Take really off sad. PMB, all these people. Yeah, don't worry about it. You good? <laughs> What's up with them vapes? You like those vapes? How long you been vaping now? A really long time. I can't even, I won't even say it. I, can't um but yeah it's an addiction i should stop it's all right maybe in 2023 i'm addicted to weed so it's okay Shit, we all have our vices you know what i mean we're here to live a human experience so i'm just gonna yeah keep how do you human. how'd you feel about like who was like the number one artist to you like your favorite artist that passed away like recently that passed away yeah. recently recently like i mean there's been a lot oh. i mean mo three you know, you got yeah. yeah, Mo3 was was one of my favorites. Gemini gang, by the way. We're both Geminis. Uh -huh. So um <laughs> That's a hard one because a lot of my favorite people are think thankfully still here. Really? Um P M B P M B Rock. I, I love I love all those people, but you know, yeah. uh, the people that I hold in high regard, either yeah. they died a long time ago or they're they're still Okay. Um, a Maybe, lot, all right, I lied. I'll change the question. Folks. Well, um, no, like passed away, I'll probably say X, honestly. Okay. And that's not even that recent, but. It was um, like four years no. ago, five years ago. He, like yeah, he was extremely influential and a, honestly a genius. And I'm really sad we didn't, we weren't able to see him grow. I mean, he was a baby. Juice World, too. Juice World as well. You know, I, I can't like fake stunt and act like I'm a huge Juice World fan, but he, I have a lot of respect. You know what I'm saying? A lot of respect. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the people I'm list, I li I listen to a lot of people. Um, Kid Leroy is pretty straight. He's Kid not too Leroy's, bad. I love Koi Leroy. That bitch is awesome. Yeah, she's I cool. Love her. She she's went viral. So cute for yeah, a while. I mean, she she still is. Hell yeah, she and she's hot. She is hot. Yeah. <laughs> she looks great. And she makes great music. I love Young Baby Tate, VK the Ruler, Tia Karen. I love a lot of bad bitches. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Local folks. Janae Paramore is dope. Um, she's in a mixer. Anastasia Felicity is awesome. Yeah. There's a bunch of just awesome musicians out there. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you being behind, like, you know, the, the music industry and that curtain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's that curtain where you, you know what I'm saying? You've seen right. some shit. You've seen some shit, but you, you, don't, you don't really talk about it. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> what is like, my question to you is, what is the weirdest thing you have ever experienced just being in the music scene? Like, like what is the weirdest thing? It's less of like a specific experience and more of like a theme, a resounding theme, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious, but most people who are in music are not creative and who don't give a shit about art. Um, unfortunately, that's changing a lot now, especially like, of course, if you're in the local scene, if you're around a lot of young people, um, that's totally different. And those communities are, are doing phenomenally. They're doing great. Um, but when it comes to the people in power, a lot of them are, are not 
and you know yeah. our business people and uh, i don't know it, you, you don't know those know. people that are like you know what like they like an artist and then he turns gay and then they're like nah like bad bunny like you got to give the credit when it's due i feel like when it comes to making art that yeah. is like definitely like separate Acro across the board man yeah. i mean i i was thinking oh no wait here it's so funny that you bring that up like um about about x actually and about like separating the art from the artist and the controversy around him and stuff like that and you know two things can be right at the same time people can be shitty and be phenomenally talented people can be Fuck. gay and be phenomenally talented they're not connected in either way and neither thing takes away from the other someone being phenomenally talented doesn't make them less of a shitty person but them being a shitty person doesn't make them less talented um so yeah i mean if you if you enjoy music if you enjoy art it makes you happy it brings you a, a connection I, to who gives a fuck who made it enjoy the art utilize it for its intended person its intended purpose and digest it exactly know? So, 2023, mm -hmm. it's going to be a fast year, but a long year at the same time. You know what I mean? So, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of goals ahead for this year. Yeah. You know? So, what are, what are the couple goals that you got? Planned, so, set up? for sure, the first official Dare and Defy convention. Um, I want to make that happen in 2023. And what is that? So, essentially, it would be a two-day convention in Orlando, Florida with one day that is fully educational we have you know panels and different speakers and things like that um networking events and then the next day would just be like a huge concert with all of my partners and you know people will we will be holding auditions for it and things like that so um just you know things that i've been doing in terms of shows and classes and stuff like that but taking it to the next level doing something a little bit bigger and hopefully just bringing together as many people in the orlando and you know greater florida area together that that want to do this music thing do it right and, yeah. and you know okay <laughs> sounds like you got a lot of shit ready you know what i'm yeah, saying I that's mean, good I'm blessed to be around, you know, and I'll shout them out real quick. I'm blessed to be around some amazing folks yeah. like Inner Space Orlando and Altamont, uh, TMC in Longwood, uh, just Longwood. two of my amazing partners who, you know, on the production side of things, on the marketing side of things, just everything are phenomenal people. And, you know, I'm able to, you know, do some awesome, great stuff with them. And I know that. 2023 is going to be great. You know, I have a lot of, you know, conferences set up for me to attend and for me to work at. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited for, you know, expansion, but, you know, controlled, control, controlled chaos is what I'm ready for. No, that's good. Like <laughs> you being in an uncomfortable state, mm. you know, it makes it builds you stronger. Like it, it makes you into a stronger Always. person and it feels like you're, you're just in a better, you're in motion. You're going where you need to go. You know, you're going against fucking gravity. You're going against fucking all these people telling you you can't do it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, and you just got to prove them wrong. So, yo, shout out to you. I'm, I'm, Thank you. <laughs> shout out to you. My question is now, my last question. Okay. Um, how important is like getting radio play nowadays? And what's your opinion on radio? It's not necessary. Um... I have a radio show now, okay. which is pretty cool. I do that on. Ooh, What's I the name of the show? It's called Dare to Defy Radio. We are powered by Magnifica Network. I'm gonna put it right uh, here. I do that every Monday at 7 p.m. and I do like, for, but you know, my thing is the way that I run my show is a reflection of how I feel about radio. Okay. I don't charge for submissions. That's pretty much the basis it. of it. I only play independent music if it's not quality. That and one of the reasons that I don't want there to be a paywall is because I don't, you know, I'm I integrity of music is really important to me. If you send me five hundred dollars because you want something to get played and it's ass, yeah, I might throw you to another show. Yeah, right. Your song's not being played on, on my show. Okay. Um. And what do you consider quality? Is it just like and who and who uh, do you have like a group of people that? That give you know the opinion so on I have co-hosts okay. um and they're able to like if they have people that they want to bring and have their music I trust those people so they're you know able to to do that um but you know a lot of it is is just myself and I I go through submission submissions almost every day from social media that I funnel first through my podcast and I'll re I will review everyone's music 
Um, but the music from the podcast that I like and that I'm like, this is solid, I'll play it on the radio. I'll play with it on my stuff. Um, and yeah, and that, that's the way I believe it should be. I don't think, you know, it's with this, it's like this with promoters and radio and things of the same sorts. I don't feel comfortable with artists paying people for something that they need. You're a radio show. You need music to play. Yeah. Why does someone have to pay you to play yeah. the thing that your entire... Yeah, that makes like, sense. That that's makes sense. the way that I look at it. It's also illegal. Do you consider it as a business, though? Or will <laughs> you later down the line? Yeah. Well, the, the thing... The way that radio was supposed to work is yeah. that they're supposed to make money off of commercials, advertising, and sponsorships. It's true. Yeah. Payola is illegal. You're not supposed people. You're not supposed to be charged for radio play. It is against the law. But people do yeah. it, and people because people don't know, and people are naive. And if you have the money and you don't care, who am I to tell you? But it's not necessary. If you're gonna spend your money, spend it on market. If you're because you're gonna spend a lot of money to get your money, your song on the radio. Yeah. Put that into a marketing campaign. Get people to actually organically listen to your music. Yeah. Or buy merch from you or buy tickets from you. So market, guys. Market, I know this a lot of people don't market themselves. And playlisting as well. Don't pay for playlisting either. Like any yeah. of these like fucking subscription guarantee you're getting bots sent to your music. And if Spotify catches you, your shit's going to get taken down and it's going to fuck up your algorithm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Invest, your, <laughs> invest your money into Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads. Go out and fucking... Pass out the cards and, and shit. Exactly, yeah. bro. That's how. It, don't like when I met you, I passed out a card to you. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And it was at a marketing event, or it was at a, a concert actually, and you were performing. Weren't you performing? I think so. Yeah, I probably was. But yeah, yeah. I mean, those are that. That's how you actually convert people because you don't want it to be fake either. Because you know, anybody can pay for twenty thousand streams. Yeah, you can pay to get your monthly subscribe your monthly listeners up. You can pay um, for it all. But it's all if, yeah. if you really give a fuck about it and you want it to be real and you actually want to make money, yeah. you actually want to make money. Yeah, not just look. Not right. just look like it. Do right? it the right way. Do it organically. Yeah. That's crazy. So, hey, that's I learned a lot today. Man, that's <laughs> that's a, another one. We made it. But, hey, guys. Are we in the motherfucking house? Thank you for having for me, For the man. second time. Good to be back. That's loyal. That's fucking loyal right That's there. That's one of my best qualities. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Gemini gang. You know what I mean? You have anything else to say for the Dope Talk family? Yeah, man. Um, every Friday in January, I'm going to be having a class over at Interspace Orlando. For any updates on what I have going on, follow me on Instagram at Nadie Sabe Official. That's N-A-D-I-E-S-A-B-E -E Official. Um, yeah, so we have classes coming up. I have a jam, an open jam session, Orlando coming up. Um, I have showcases coming up. I have women in music events coming up. So just stay tuned. You know, if you're interested in being educated, always, you know, reach out to me personally. All of my contact information is in the, you know, my profile on Instagram. So yeah, just, um, stay tuned and don't, you know, don't sleep. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Lifts in the desk we got to start helping each other out especially people from the same city you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying shout out orlando shout out 386 sure. you know what i'm saying 407 can see me everywhere you know what i mean so hey i'm so happy that you came i really appreciate you, Thank you. uh shout out to you and hopefully we see you again absolutely i'm sure you will <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah peace out guys